Turns out the upper crust of society is now finding out the hard way just how easy they had it. Uh, now, because of coronavirus, many wealthy people have been obviously staying home uh, because of these stay-at-home orders, but so is their health. So their housekeepers, their cooks, their maids, uh, all that uh, help around the house is no longer there. Now, you also had, uh, for example, Fox News, Ainsley Erdhart complaining about her au pair. Many families here, including mine, we have au pairs and we rely on them. I go to work at three o'clock in the morning, so I need her there and I need her in my house so that she can help me with my daughter. So many families rely on child care from other countries. These are all things, these are questions that we have that hopefully the president will roll out a plan and we'll all be um, informed on how this is going to affect all of our lives. Oh, my au pair. I hope President Trump addresses my au pair. How dare me have to spend time with my children? Uh, okay. You know what? President Trump actually did make an exception for au pairs. Because of course. Because of course. Uh, so now, I know. There's all this shock and horror about rich people having to do their own household things. So much, of course, that, again, you had the au pair have a special carve-out from President Trump's immigration order. Uh, but there are others. The New York Post actually interviewed quite a few of them. Uh, and the first is dermatologist Kenneth Mark. So now, not quite as wealthy as uh, any of the Fox News hosts, but very wealthy dermatologist, doing very good for himself. That's excellent. Uh, and so, you know, he does Botox injections and things like that, cosmetic surgery. Uh, and, well, now he finds himself at home without his housekeeper of 20 years. So this uh, housekeeper not only takes care of, you know, the things around the house as they're supposed to, uh, Mark tells the Post that she, quote, really takes care of everything. In fact, uh, he just had uh, his first son that was born last year. Uh, and so she's also a nanny. In fact, she cleans the house, watches the baby. She's almost like the house manager, cleaning lady and nanny all rolled into one. And so everything was fantastic for him, going really great, until we had this coronavirus. Uh, now, Mark, and I got to give him some credit for this. He says, quote, it was unfair to ask her to come in, says Mark, who splits his time between Murray Hill and the Hamptons. From a medical perspective, it was potentially dangerous for her and us. All right. And look, again, you got some credit here for needlessly not exposing his housekeeper and also still keeping her on payroll. So that's important, right? And, and I, and I got to point out when good, you know, when good things happen, when people make good decisions. Uh, in this case, he's still paying his housekeeper, even though his housekeeper is safely, of course, staying in her own home. So again, to be fair, right? Uh, now, credit where credit is due. So now here comes the fun part. Well, apparently he had no idea how much work she actually does. In fact, he says, quote, I, it's been a complete shock to our normal everyday day to day life. I'm doing way more than I would under normal circumstances. Well, no kidding. That housekeeper was literally doing everything. So yeah, you're going to be doing more than you would under normal circumstances. I'm just saying. And look, I'm not saying that he, you know he doesn't work. Of course, he's you know uh, does those, those Botox injections and things like that. Uh, and actually does have a day job, but at the same time, he's finding out how difficult it is to actually be able to do your own chores. Uh, now, just for before I go further, just think about the people who not only have to work sometimes two, maybe three jobs to survive, but also to come home and not be able to afford a nanny or a housekeeper and to actually have to do your own chores. That's the day to day reality for millions and millions of Americans. The 99%. And so just, you know, think about that for a second. Um, if you're a very wealthy person that's watching. All right. So now there are others uh, who have spoken up. Uh, this is Seth MacFarlane. Uh, and he was recently on an episode of uh, Real Time with Bill Maher. He said this, quote, you want to talk about the great equalizer. People like us take things for granted. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Uh we take our housekeepers for granted. Things like laundry and changing the cat box, even figuring out how to do floors. My God, it's a hell of a lot harder than making TV. 
Another person, uh, Philip Scheinfeld, broker at Compass, who grew up with a, a in a prominent Upper East Side building, said this: "That stay-at-home mom who was a housekeeper and chef has had to let them go. Now they're doing the diapers, putting the kids to sleep, and making dinner. I know how how horrible is it? You got to actually take care of your kid. Um, I'm sure Bravo would love to start filming these ladies. It would make for a great show." No, you know what it would be? It would, it would be a fail compilation. Oh, imagine, right? I'd probably sit down to watch, like, watch this rich lady fail at doing laundry. Oh, look at that. She set it on fire. How do you do that? How do you set your clothes on fire on accident? Wow. No, that would be amazing. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, and let me give you an example of how it would be a fail compilation. A Fifth Avenue doctor who decided to work from her office without employees to maintain a semblance of normality, right? She said she discovered on day one just how helpless she was without her team of five assistants. Quote, I didn't even know where to put the trash. Usually the garbage is collected by my staff and they put it somewhere. I still don't know where that is. You don't know where to put the trash. It's called a dumpster. You put garbage in it. <laughs> I'm just imagining that there is a side room in this woman's office that is filled with trash bags or will be filled with trash bags. <laughs> uh, now, her solution, by the way, to this wasn't to figure things out on her own. No, 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 no. No, it's to deputize her husband. Really? Um, Yes, she bribed him with luxury medical treatments such as Botox and M-Sculpt. Hey, babe, you know, I, I, you know, you know that Botox you wanted to get? I'm going to give it to you for free if you come work in my office. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, look, I don't even know what M-Sculpt is. Uh, and so, uh, not a beauty expert here. Not a lot of money here. I'm just saying. Uh, but she said... My husband is taking care of all the miscellaneous tasks, like answering phone calls, dropping up product orders at the post office, cleaning, and even gets my lunch for me. Husband of the year. But says, I really had to coax him, but he's earning his keep. Oh. Now, there was another pers uh, a, a, a person that's quoted in this, right? And uh, this is somebody who's rena remained anonymous, right? And talks about how her daughter grew up in the lap of luxury and has never had to do a damn thing for her life, uh, a, a day in her life, right? Uh, in fact, she had always, always had assistance and help, right? So now the kids don't have that help anymore, and they're struggling. Uh, in fact, this uh, Upper East Side mother says, my daughter's having to do everything for the first time in her entire life. She's always had daily help. And of course, that turns out to be a mess. Uh, in fact, she's quoted as saying, she just texted me and said, do you know if mustard and pickles go into the refrigerator? Imagine not knowing the simple things. <laughs> this is how much they rely on working class folks. Understand the masks are all off now. I mean, this should be a wake up. Turns out we actually need our help. Yeah. Uh, and we've been taking advantage of that help. And we've been taking people for granted. The workers. Hey, you need us. You need us workers. We're the actual backbone of America. That means, what are you? Right? No Fortune 500 billionaire is getting us through this. No. It's the grocery store workers. It's the truck drivers. It's the people that are working in fast food right now that are keeping you fed. These, these are the people, look, there's a reason they're called essential. Whereas the wealthy, not essential. No, we're essential to them. They extract the resources and wealth from us and our help. <laughs> and now they're starting to realize that without us, without the working class, they're a mess. They're a disaster and can't function. Just like it turns out, the economy. It's the opposite of Atlas Shrugged. Because it turns out 
you know, the whole plot of Atlas Shrugged is, well, the rich people decided they were going to leave society and society falls apart. It's the opposite. No, if all the working class, if we left, the rich would have no idea what to do. And they would fall apart at the seams. Complete and utter anarchy. Take that lesson to heart. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.